Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this lecture of Python, we'll be understanding the difference between static methods and class methods. What are the parameters that can be passed to the class method? What are the parameters that cannot be passed to the static method? How the class method can change the state of the class? How come the output of a static method is common to all instances? And how is it possible for a class method to return an object? We'll be understanding the concept practically. So let's move on to the computer. This is a program which has the static method as well as class method. This is the static method, prod stat count, and this is the class method. Now, what is this serious parameter doing in the class method? Why not the self method is used in the static method? And what are the instance and class attribute used here? And how do they relate to the static and class method? And we will understand the concept very clearly step by step. Right? So, watch the video up till the end. To understand the difference between class and static method clearly, we will be doing few programs on class method and few program on static method and then we will be doing one program which includes both static method as well as class method to understand the difference between them very clearly. So let us start with the first program. See let me tell you one thing that to inform the Python that this is the class method you have to use the class method decorator right. Secondly the first parameter that is sent to the class method is CLS that is the class itself. Whosoever the class is invoking the class method, that class itself goes to the class method. Like in the last lecture we saw, when an instance invokes any function, the instance itself goes to the method and the first parameter in that method is the self. Self means the instance itself is pointing to itself, right? So the CLS is the first parameter in the class method. Secondly, the class method is bound to class rather than the object and can be called by both class and object. And third point is that the class method can change the class attribute and once any class state is changed, that changes will be seen in all the instances of that class. And a class cannot access the instance attribute. If it will try, you will get an error. And the most important thing, a class method can return an object of the class. We will see how. We will start with the first program. See, this is the class book and this is the class attribute price which is initialized to value 100. Okay. Now we'll start from the main. This you are making an object B of book class. Okay. The control will go up and this class attribute price 100 will be assigned to this B. You are making another object C of book class. Again, control will come over here. This price attribute will be assigned to C also and its value will be initialized to 100. Okay. B dot show. That is the instance method show is called. Control will come over here. This self is pointing to the object itself. That is, it is pointing to the object B. Right. Displaying self dot price. The price attribute for both these instances set to 100. So it will display the value 100. Okay. Now book dot set price. Through this decorator, the set price is declared as a class method. And CLS is obviously the first parameter. And it is pointing to the class itself. That is, the CLS is pointing to the book class. Right. Now, you can change the class attribute through a class method. So, when you write series dot price equal to 150, this value 100 of the class attribute is modified to value 150. Now, as we just discussed that the class method can change the state of the class and that impact will be seen to all the methods. So, when you invoke the show method, which will come over here and it will display the self dot price, you will get the value 150, right? And when you invoke again show method through the C object, again you will get the value 150. This is just to tell you that the Changes made to the class attribute can be seen. The impact of that can be seen in both the instances. Right. So let's copy it and run this program. This is a spider ID. I am pasting it over here. And I am running it. See. Let us make the concept of class method more clear by another program. See, this is the again class book. This is a class attribute. Right. And this is your class method display. Let's start from here. You have made one object B of book class. So this attribute price is assigned to this B. Okay. When you invoke book dot display, display is a class method. Okay. And you can invoke it through B dot display or you can invoke by writing book dot display. You can invoke this class method through instance as well as through the class. Control will come over here. The CLS is pointed to the class itself that is book. On the screen you get the text class method and then CLS dot price. Obviously you get the value 100. Right. And now you are modifying the value. You are adding value 10 to the 
price attribute it will become 110 okay now you come over here this statement is to confirm you that you can invoke the class method through the object also so this b object is invoking the class method display class method you get the series dot price that how much 110 okay now you made the value through the instance through the object b you have incremented value and you have added value 10 to the class attribute okay so the value of price attribute will become 120 okay now you are invoking the simple instance method you are sending the value 200 to that now let me tell you this 200 will be assigned to this x parameter this is the instance method right there is not a class method so if this instance is making certain changes to the price attribute see let me tell you this self dot price is different from this sealess dot price both the names are same but this is the price attribute of the instance and it is confined to the instance only so this 200 which is assigned to the price attribute this price is of instance that is to the object b and it has nothing to do with the class attribute price okay you get the output instance method and you get the value 200 when you make an object c of book class and when you invoke the class method display through object c you get the output class method and you get the value 120 not 200 just to make you very clear that this self dot price is quite different from the sealers dot price okay i could have written book dot display like here okay output will be the same so let's copy it and run this program Control c to copy and deleting it and pasting it and ec see i have written the comments also to make it very clear for you changes made by the instance method will not be applied to the class attribute i have written it for your better understanding i am running it see can you see it now to understand the point that a class method can determine an object we will see to this program see this is a class product and it has a parameterized constructor it has an instance method and it is a class method okay i assume that you've seen my earlier lecture that is lecture 16 where i have explained what are classes and the concept of default and parameterized constructor if you haven't seen that lecture i am providing you the link in the description box please have a look to it you will understand this lecture more better okay so you are making an object p1 of product class when the compiler will look at the two arguments over here it will search for a parameterized constructor with two parameters so it will find it over here pizza will be assigned to this name parameter 60 will be assigned to this amount parameter and these item and price are the instance attributes that means this item and price are assigned to this p1 object okay so the item and price attribute of p1 object are set to pizza and 60 respectively control will come over here you are invoking the simple instance method disp product self means the object itself that is p1 is pointing to itself product self dot item that is pizza is available at price self dot price that is the value 60 okay now see you are invoking this class method get object through the class product and you are passing two parameters so in this class method get object you have two parameters name and amount we have already discussed that cls is always the first parameter which is pointing to the class itself that is it is pointing to the product class this hot dog will be assigned to this name parameter 15 will be assigned to this amount parameter now let me tell you you are returning the cls method you are returning the object with two parameters name and amount right and the value of name and amount is set to hot dog and 15 what will happen with this line is that a parameterized constructor will be invoked and obviously this name will be assigned to this name parameter this amount will be assigned to the amount parameter that means the name will become hot dog and the amount will become 15 and this self dot item is nothing but the item attribute of this object which has been created so the item and price attribute will be the attributes of the object p2 and it will be set to hot dog and 15 respectively so p2 object is created by invoking of the parameterized constructor which is invoked by this statement okay and it is verified that when you invoke that this product it will display product hot dog is available at price 15 let us copy it let us run it see pizza is available at 60 it is because of this product and this hot dog is available at 15 because of this get object has returned this values name and amount which were passed through this 
arguments. Now let us start with static method. See, static method is declared by the decorator static method. You can call it annotation also. You cannot use self or CLS in the static method. What is this LZ50? It's a class attribute. Length is 50. This is a simple program. This is to tell you that you can invoke a static method through class and you can invoke the static method through the instance also. See, you are invoking this message static method through the class. So control will come over here. L is 50, length is 50 is displayed. You are making an object R of red class. You are invoking the static method this message. So control will come over here. L is 50, length is 50. So you can invoke a static method through object as well as through the class. Let's run this program. See, length is 50, length is 50. It is displayed twice. Now I want to tell you something from here. Static method cannot access the instance attribute and if it tries to access the instance attribute, you get an error. Let's see how. This is a class rect. This is a class attribute, length is 10. Accessing a class attribute is not a problem. Neither through the static method, neither through the class method. Accessing instance variable through static method or class method will get you an error. Let us see through this program. You are making an object R of red class. Because there are no arguments here, Python will search for a default constructor. If it is there, it will execute it. And here is the default constructor. It will execute this line self.b020. See, in this program, deliberately we are making use of class attribute. This L is a class attribute. And we are making use of instance attribute. This B is the instance attribute. But this self only, it is declared that it is related to an object. Which object? R. Right? So the attribute B is set to 20 of object R. And this class attribute is set to value 10. You are invoking the rect area, which is the static method through the rect class. You could have invoked it through the R object also. Control will come over here. Length rec dot l that is 10 will be displayed you are modifying the value of the class attribute through a static method it will become 15 see through comment also i have mentioned it to make the concept very clear i have written that blow statement will get you an error when you try to display breadth is going to be it will get you an error because see in static method you cannot use cls or self parameters this self dot b confirms that this is related to an instance here the compiler will tell you what is this b i cannot see it so that is how I have commented it out. Okay. And when you invoke R dot display, it will display the class attribute that is 15 because it is modified through the static method and the breadth value is 20. This is a normal instance method. This is the static method. Okay. I just copy it and run it. See. Length is 15. Why? Because by invoking static method, you have modified the value of class attribute. You have made it 15 and breadth is 20. Right. Now to understand the difference between static and class method, I have made a program which is a bit bigger, but it includes both static method as well as class method. See, you should understand that the static method knows nothing about the class. Class method knows everything about the class because CLS parameter is passed to the class method. The class method works with the class since its parameter is always the class itself. Class method can be called both by class and its object. Obviously, the static method can also be called with this. But the main difference is that the class method can return object of the class, whereas static method cannot do so. Now, to understand the difference between the static and class method more clearly, this program is there. See, this program has a parameterized constructor. It has an instance method disk beta, static method prod stat count, and one prod class count class method, right? So, here we'll start. See, you are making an object P1 and you are passing one argument camera. Python will realize that there has to be a parameterized constructor, right? And here is the parameterized constructor. Control will come over here. And this camera will be assigned to this parameter name. Self dot name is going to name. That means the camera will be assigned to the name attribute. When you write self here, that means this name is the instance attribute. So the name attribute of product P1 will be set to camera. This count is a class attribute. You are incrementing its value to 1. To make it more readable, I have used the comments at every step. See, I have written here, the count in above statement is a class variable. Hence, the class name is used along with the variable. Can you see that the class name is used here with the class attribute? Right? Control will come over here. Here, you are creating another object P2. Obviously, you are passing one argument, cell. Compiler will come over here and will invoke this parameterized constructor. Cell refers to the cell phone. 
and that string cell will be assigned to the name parameter cell dot name is going to name that means the name attribute of p2 instance will be set to cell count was set to 1 it will become 2 right and the changes made to the class attribute will be seen in both the instances p1 and p2 and we'll see to it soon you are invoking the disk to data which is the instance method through p1 object okay what is the output you, that you will get name that is your camera product count is true because if any changes are made to the class attribute those changes are visible in all the instances here you are invoking the static method you written the text static method so that we should know that this output is through the static method and this output is through the class method static method the product count is you are invoking the prod stat count static method through the class you could have invoked with the instance also right so control will come to this prod stat count here I mentioned it also see below line will get you an error because you cannot modify the instance variable that is why I commented out I am trying to modify the name attribute which is nothing but instance attribute I am trying to modify to India see recall that we cannot use CLS or self parameter with the static method so the compiler will give you an error that I cannot recognize this name attribute but you can always access and make the changes to the class attribute through the static method so you are adding value 5 to the count class attribute which was already 2 so it will become 7 you are returning that product count that is 7 will come and will be displayed here now here also I have commented out just to explain you that you are invoking the prod class count which is nothing but the class method you can invoke this prod class count through class you can invoke it through the p2 object so I have written over here that the output of this prod class count through product class output of prod class count through p2 instance will be same when the prod class count is invoked through p1 instance so the output of the three will be same whether you invoke the class method through either of the two instances or through the class output will be same and I have written over here just to make you informed about it so when you invoke prod class count control will come over here you have modified the value of class attribute to 10 it was 7 you made it 10 you are displaying the details of class that is your the class name product and all will be displayed just to know that this output has come from the class method you have written that class method the product count is 10 7 is lost ok and I have written here through comment below print statement will get you an error because you cannot access the instance variable through the class method so if I remove this comment here the compiler will get you an error that I cannot recognize this name attribute because name is the instance attribute now you are invoking the disk data through the p2 object control will come over here you get the name as cell product counts will appear as 10 because through the class method you modified the value of the class attribute this is to confirm that the changes made by the class method to any class attribute will be seen through all the instances ok let's copy this and run the program camera product count is 2 it has appeared from this disk data name camera count has become 2 because twice this parameter constructor was invoked and the value of class attribute count was incremented by 1 in every invoking of this parameterized constructor this static method when it was called it has added value 5 to the count value so the output has come as 7 if I uncomment this line see you get an error because you cannot access the name attribute see undefined name can you see it because that is this name instance attribute is not visible in the static method I will comment it back I repeat you can invoke this prod class count through the p2 object also you can invoke this prod class count through the product class also output will always be same here you set the value of the class attribute count to 10 class info that is this is the information about the class product class and this product count is set to 10 right so this series dot count displays the value 10 and when you invoke the disk data you get the value 10 to confirm that the changes made by the class method to any class attribute will be visible in the instances also if you followed this lecture please subscribe to my channel share the video with your friends and do write the comments please thanks for watching the video have a nice day